the bass down. I was frustrated. I was like, is this really what you want to do? And I looked at myself and I was like, is this it? You can change now. Is this it? And I was like, yeah, this is it. I picked the bass, I picked, <laughs> I picked the bass up and I went back to woodshed. And you know, yeah, like it it's, it's, yeah. Yay, look, we all been there. And we and the thing is, the results, man, we here now. We still here. You know? So, I mean, you recently got married. I did. I did. April 16th, 2016. <laughs> so, do you feel any added pressure to succeed now that, that you have a new family? Um, I think the drive has always been there. I think now it's just a matter of making sure that my finances are in straight are straight because now... It's not just me, you know, it's me and my wife have been living together for the last four and a half years. So it's not, you know, we've always kind of looked out for each other and took taking care of each other anyway. Now the pressure is um, more about thinking about the future. You know, it's like, how do you succeed in your career and then still like think about down the line? Like, OK, well we need to be putting away money for this or, you know, thinking about like one day, where do you want to buy a house? Do you want, do you want to buy a house? Yeah. Do you want to have kids? Uh, how many? How are you still going to tour when you have kids? You know, like those are real questions that have to be asked. And, you know, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. My wife is very, very understanding. And, act, you know, some women say they understand the life of a musician and they <laughs> give you that, they give you that, you know, jive shit right before you start dating them and then you start dating and like you should stop playing music and no my <laughs> why wife you is, go, why you gotta go out of town yeah why you leave for so long <laughs> my wife has been very very supportive and she's been with me through like the thick and thin of touring success failure when i'm like you know all those different stages and she's been very very encouraging through the whole the whole route you know i got a good one so that's great i can't i, I can't you know say anything more about you know, just I'm just very, very fortunate. You know, hey, not hey, all of us hey. are like that. Hey, yes, yes, indeed. So I, mean, I want I want to switch gears. What's up? I want to talk about your record. Oh man, the record. So you, you record. So the funny thing about this record is you recorded it years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got the bread together, released it. You know what I mean? You were like on the iTunes list. I don't even know how you did that. But that, I, was I on there? Yeah, you were on there, man. Your face, Barry Stevens. That's funny. I didn't even know that. I clicked it. Push play. That's deep. That's deep. Okay. <laughs> so the name of the record is? The name of my first record is uh, Basic Truths. And I recorded it the year after I moved to New Orleans. In 2011, I recorded the summer 2011. And I invited a bunch of my friends from FSU who um, at the time weren't living in New Orleans. But funny enough, everyone on the record except Chris Padishaw lives in New Orleans right now. Damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was like that was the impetus for uh, Jameson moving there. Uh, uh, Riccio, Fruget, okay, okay. Emily Fredrickson, Jesse Smith moved there. I guess Jesse lives here now. Yeah. But um, he engineered the record, and then Joe Goldberg played on the record. Ricardo wow. Pascal, like all those guys, live down there now. Funny enough, Florida takeover. Florida takeover, <laughs> bruh. And um, you know, it was a beautiful experience. It was a camaraderie. I actually don't even really like my playing on that record. But the the energy between and the camaraderie was just so ma it was a magical magical date and I was like I have to put this out. Now what stalled me is I went through a series of events like um, a putting out a record by yourself is expensive mm -hmm. first and foremost. B my hard drive crashed so I had to get it recovered and then after that I started touring. <laughs> so right, right. life happened. Yeah, life happened, man. And it's like you know gathering the funds and then. I really just want, my wife kept being like, and my girlfriend at the time, she was like, so what's happening with this record? Like, are you, she's like, you need to go ahead and put that out. Like, get it done. Get it done. Gently pushing. Yeah. She learned a term from a friend, a mutual friend of ours called, uh, going in the, uh, it's, it's on the shelf, I think, or in the oh, can. Oh, it's in the can, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, I heard about this term, uh, in the can where a record just sits on the shelf and it doesn't get released. And she's like, are you going to let that happen to your record? I'm like, no, no. She's like, all right, I'll see it when I believe it. Man, I like that. Man, I'll yeah. never forget on the album release. The record was released um, in March of 2015. And I came down with a terrible upper respiratory infection. So, like, I remember when I woke up, I was supposed to be cleaning the house because some friends were coming in town to stay with us. And I couldn't get out of the bed. I had, like, this terrible fever. I think I was running, like, 101 fever or something wow. like that. And 
I had to rehearse the entire week with the cats. I was on antibiotics, so I couldn't drink. And it's like, you know, you live in New Orleans, A. It's like not being able to drink in New Orleans is hard. And then B, not being able to drink to celebrate your record that you've been, like, preparing for years. (laughs) And it was such a different experience. It was actually really, really pleasant to be sober on that gig, though. I'm not going to lie. It was a different kind of thing. But it was like, dang, man. Like, I had to go through a lot just to get that happening. And then mm-hmm. I came out on the other side, and I was proud of it, you know? Wow. And so pe- I want people to check it out. Yeah, Do man. You, you have a link? Yeah, they can go to BarryStevensonMusic.com. So, so we'll put it right right up here. There, there you go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's wherever you can buy music. It's on Amazon. It's on okay. iTunes. It's on Bandcamp. So you know what I'll do? I'll I'll link it in the description. You guys can check it out. Please do. Let Barry know if you like it or not. If you don't, keep you know. it to yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gotten. It's, I'm I'm very very fortunate. Most of the you know you know musicians are the hardest people to please. Right. Most of the time they don't even listen to your record, but most people checked it out and they enjoyed it. It was mm-hmm. it was I got really good feedback from it, and then the lay people enjoyed it too. So. That's actually all that really matters is the lay people. They enjoyed it. That's great, man. So, man, wh- where will you be in two years? Two years, um, I'm either going to still be at my apartment in Harlem or we're going to be trying to find another place. But uh, <laughs> That's when that lease run out. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll still be in New York. Uh, I, I, got some, I got some work to do here, so uh, I'll definitely still be in New York. Hopefully by then, uh, I'm actually in the process of releasing my second album, so by then, hopefully, I'll have already toured under my own name and, um, you know, be working on a third record, hopefully, by then. And uh, by then, I would also like to have recorded a good amount of other projects with other artists and collaborations. That's that's a key one. It's like, I want to be able to collaborate with different artists from different mediums, not just like jazz or music, like com- collaborating with like visual artists, collaborating yeah. with filmmakers, collaborating with, you know... Uh, freaking uh chefs <laughs> you know like seriously like there's so much that yeah. can be done in the world of music and the arts in general but that happens from conversations with different people and that's how cool stuff comes up man like yeah, yeah. and there's a lot of those people in new york so that's you know that's, that's the beautiful thing about being here man you are so right i agree with you on that man so so uh just to finish things out here like what two things are you most grateful for um, man. I don't want to limit you. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, <laughs> one, th- one is given the state of things in America, just being alive right now. I'm a you know 29 year old African American male. I have two college degrees, um, a master. I mean, I have bachelor's and master's. I have no kids. I've never been to jail. You know, that's that's just not you know. I know you have most of those things, but you can't say you haven't been to jail. So, <laughs> sorry to put you on blast, baby. <laughs> but uh, no, you know, uh, just I'm just grateful for life, man. To be alive and to be healthy, to have a beautiful wife and a beautiful family who supports me, um, and friends who love me, and you know, they are actually real. You know, like I, I, I'm just grateful to be where I am in this opportunity. I think about it all the time, and I'm, I look up and I'm. I'm walking through New York City and I'm like, man, I live in New York City right now. I'm like, you did it, baby, and I'm doing my thing, you know. Like, <laughs> and, it, and it's, I know it's, it's not as I'm not gonna say it was easy for me. It has not been easy, but it's. I feel like my transition into the city has been easier than most, just because of the way I prepared beforehand. So I was very, I'm just very fortunate that the move has been very gracious to me so far, and I'm just hoping it just gets better from here. You know, it will, man. Yeah. Y'all, I want to thank Barry Stevenson for coming on the Working Artist Project. Man, thank you, Double D. There it is. Check out his record. Yeah, buy that mug. <laughs>